What's up, everybody? Today we're here with Jen, and we're gonna be talking about how he grew cold agency. So thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks. Looking forward, guys. What's up, everybody? Today we are talking to Jan, who's doing some really cool things in the cold email space. We're gonna dive into his story, how he got started, and how he's growing the business, and some of his goals. Well, Jan, thanks for hopping on. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. Looking forward. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there might or might not have been an in-person intro, but played before this because we actually met in Chiang Mai a few months ago. So maybe that'll be there. Yeah. Uh, but one thing I have to say before we start is I think you might have the record for the tallest person in the cold email space. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. You're not doing bad yourself either, but uh, I think uh, I think I'll hold the record, yeah. <laughs> the, the reason I mentioned that is like I meet a lot of people in the online business world, and most business guys are generally tall. But I'm six foot six, and you have to be what, six foot nine? Yeah, six nine, I think. Yeah, yeah, two meter yeah. seven in uh, European metrics. Yeah. 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 So it, it's impossible to tell like through, through tweets or for, through an interview or YouTube video. So I, uh, I just thought it was funny that I pointed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sucks, right? You can't use it to your advantage online. So it's a big part of your uh, identity in real life yeah. missing on the uh, on the internet. But now everyone knows, so uh, I can uh, use it. Yeah, and I, I can I can promise anybody listening. Um, two white guys our size walking through Thailand are uh, a bit of a what do you call it? Like, and it also have my friend of us who's pretty tall. So it's it's a funny picture. You have like three giants. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, and that was that was a surprise to me. But anyways, we'll, we'll stop talking about height and we'll get into it. So, uh, Jen, what is it that you do? <laughs> sure. Yeah, so uh, I run a cold, a cold uh, email agency uh, where we do lead generation uh, for B2B companies. Uh, what we do and where we specialize in is uh, corporate trainers, uh, e-learning, uh, a bit of agencies as well, software. So those four industries we are uh, strong in. And uh, mostly we do our outreach uh, to enterprise uh, enterprise leads to generate those. Uh, um, yeah, so that's uh, that's basically what we do on the lead generation side. And this year we're going to introduce as well some LinkedIn services, as well as a content marketing services, because we've seen uh, a lot of success with that ourselves, uh, with the LinkedIn posting. And uh, yeah, we think it's a good addition to, uh, to the outreach. <clears throat> that's awesome, man. And when did you get started with the agency? Uh, so this agency, I started around one and a half years ago. Uh, but I got started with uh, like online lead generation in general, like five years ago. Um, started out in more B two C, so did a lot of um, like uh, lead generation for uh, like insurance companies, that kind of stuff, uh, on an affiliate model. And I did that for around two years. Uh, that was uh, pretty uh, pretty successful. It was also on email. Uh, but then some of the regulation in Europe changed around um, a GDPR, etc. Uh, so that industry wasn't as viable anymore. Decided to jump ship to B two B, and uh, yeah, I haven't looked back. Uh, I haven't looked back since. Beginning also a bit more ad stuff, and then for the last one and a half years, really nailed down on uh, on email. And uh, yeah, now we're also going to introduce LinkedIn. So uh, yeah, that's how I got started. Awesome. Well, you mentioned you work with four different main industries, and you know I've been talking to a lot of guys who do cold emails as service on the YouTube channel. One of the recurring trends between larger agencies is larging with working with larger businesses, just being that they have more defined offers, they have more social proof, you can Google them, they really know they want to target. I'm curious, have you also found that for yourself, getting results for larger companies and working with larger companies to be significantly easier? Yeah, 100%. Um, so in the past, we have worked with smaller companies too, and, and it can still work, right? Um, but you have to get a bit more like sp spectacular with the, uh, with the offer and, and like add all that kind of stuff in. Whereas with the bigger companies, uh, yeah, whenever you work with them, obviously there's an existing demand there. You have an existing positioning, existing marketing strategies as well. And uh, it's just way easier to tap in as kind of like an accelerant as opposed to like starting the fire for someone. And uh, I mean, Cold Email is a fantastic channel still for, for beginners as well. Uh, I just don't think it's the best fit to, to work with an agency because you have to really test like fundamental things within your offer, within your positioning to to find a match in, uh, in, in what works in outreach. And Cold Email is, again, a fantastic channel to do that, but I just don't think it's a, it's a good idea to do that with an, uh, an agency. Uh, so for the bigger clients we work with as well, like the the ones that have a existing sales team or at least like one sales rep, it just works so much better. They can pick up the phone, uh, they follow up better, they just know what to do, right? They know when someone is interested, they know what the next steps are, and uh, yeah, that's just really important because Cold Email is just the first step uh, in the funnel. So definitely uh, I've seen that as well. And I enjoy, I enjoy working with both, to be honest, because it is really nice as well to 
get someone their initial success. Uh, it's just not really on the agency side, it's more of like a, yeah, like helping them that person. Yeah. I 100% agree with you. I have a lot of people who are just starting out book calls with me. And a lot of the times I think it's, they think there's something magic with cold email. And there's definitely like ways to do it well. But when you're starting out, if you're going to hire someone to do cold email, it, you're not paying for marketing, you're paying for validation and market research. And a lot of times beginners pay someone to do cold email and it's, this is my money, this is my marketing spend, I need a return, where in actuality, that first three months is just going to be getting product market fit right and maybe something works. Or if you come and you have already, you know, let's say half a million in revenue and you know who your customer is, then it's marketing. It's no longer just yeah. product market fit and validation. So I'm with you. Beginners should use cold email, but they should learn a skill, not be lazy, do it themselves. And then when they want to accelerate things, come to you or come to me or any other cold email agency just to put, you know, put charcoal in the fire. Yeah, 100%. I, th I think one of the big things um, with with that as well is that if you have that existing like product market fit that leads the basis down, then that agency can really push you to the next level by just being consistent. Just having a campaign to go out every single month, just keeping like, keep prospecting, keep following up, et cetera, as opposed to uh, a lot of companies that come to us, they have like internally, they are doing some campaigns, but then they slack off, someone's on holiday, that kind of stuff, right? So I think that's where the agency really can add a lot of value as well as obviously like being on point with deliverability, latest techniques, et cetera. But it's just that that first product market fit needs to be established. Otherwise you're, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, it's just more of a fundamental thing as opposed to a channel thing. Yeah. But one thing you mentioned there is consistency because when I review campaigns of people, there are very few people who come to me with a broken campaign who have three months of data. It's always two weeks, yeah. maybe one month. And it, a lot of it, this is time too. I mean, it, it doesn't matter who I'm running a cold email campaign for. They're going to get better results month two, better results month three, better results month four, yeah. just through try, not not only from continual improvement, but just by having a pipeline. I mean, it, I, I'm i guessing you've been maintaining a pipeline now for over a year doing outreach consistently because you're an agency doing outreach. S same for me. It would be so much harder if I didn't have any momentum whatsoever. Yeah. So. Yeah, 100%. I mean, like our rule of thumb is like uh, two to four weeks after a campaign goes live, you'll start seeing if it's a good campaign or not. And another two to four weeks before you start closing deals. So, I mean, if you're just starting something, two weeks, no calls booked, panicking, <laughs> like that's not going to work. Um, and uh, I get it, right? Like when you're starting out, it's, it's harder. You want to get the results fast, but it's just, just got to stick with it. And eventually, like, like I mean, it's it's like eight, week, eight weeks out, the first deals will start to land. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you just got to trust the process. <clears throat> Another thing about working at big companies is small companies don't have that safety net and they get very desperate where a lot of bigger companies, they understand yeah. this because they've already done LinkedIn, they've done cold calling, they've done ads, they've done X, Y, and Z and they're, they're familiar with that process. And um, looping looping to, let's say somebody's doing cold emails a service or really any business and they're working as smaller businesses because they're easier to get in touch with, easier to schedule meetings, easier to close. What was something that you did that helped you from signing these smaller agencies to starting to work with more enterprise level and larger companies? Um, yeah, good question. I think uh, a big part of it is just like making sure you know how to deliver. And once you know that yourself, you intrinsically know you can deliver results for, for companies. It just gets easier to reach out to the bigger guys. And in the end, you'll realize like it's no difference, like uh, who you're selling to. Actually, I think it's easier to sell to the bigger companies because they value expertise. They value outsourced work. They know how they can use and leverage agencies to grow their business as opposed to someone that might not have that knowledge yet. And uh, I'm sure they'll get there over the years, but they, right, if you're working with a company that has like three or four employees and uh, the founders doing everything themselves, like it's just, they, they don't fail you at the same way. Um, so, I mean, the, the simple answer would just be start talking to the bigger guys and you'll, you'll notice that there aren't that... Uh, they aren't that different, actually. They might actually be easier to uh, to work with. Um, apart from that, I think also my background, like uh, having done like lead generation uh, with the B2C side of things, we're also talking to bigger companies, uh, visiting them in real life, like just getting over those hurdles when you're starting out uh, really helps uh, helps a lot too. So just breeds that confidence that you know what you're doing and uh, yeah, makes it easier to reach out to the bigger guys. Yeah, for sure. I would agree, but they could be easier to close. A lot of times you're one vendor. Like our biggest company has like eight cold email agencies he works with and he just yeah. he just cuts one off when it don't work. Like it, we're not special. Yeah. We're one of eight. 
So I, I think that yeah. helps too. Um, the only thing I would say for someone wanting to sell to big companies that's a little bit different is it's easier to sell to big companies when you do things whatever big companies do. Like for example, if you're doing a bullet point email overview and you don't have a proposal and you don't have and you're using a click funnels one page website, that's not very confidence inducing because the purchase decision is different. It's not an emotional purchase decision by a founder. It's generally a mid-level marketing employee who needs to make a case to their supervisor of an owner that you're a good choice. And if that person is betting their job potentially on if you're competent. And one thing I think about is let's say they hire you and you do terrible. They want to have reassurance to their boss that I did my due diligence. So if they can say, well, look at his pitch deck and look at the reviews on Trustpilot and Clutch and look at they were on this podcast and look at the results. They're giving themselves a safety net to say there are reasons that we should hire this company, where if you're just a one page click funnels website and you don't have a proposal, yeah, you might be lean mean and it might be cool because you're just you know, a lean agency. But how can an employee go back to their boss and say, well, look at this random who has nothing credible about him. So I also think to reach out to these companies, yeah. you need to start building assets like a big company too. Yeah, hundred percent. Like you need to be like them to to have them uh, trust you. Uh, and also, I mean, I, th I think this is actually a bit of a, a funny thing. I, I I mean, we both know each other from Twitter, right? On Twitter, you see a lot of guys always preaching the one pager, and I think it's true if you're selling too small and people that are similar to you. But like with bigger companies, you, you have to have a good website. You have to have a clean like LinkedIn. No pictures with cigars or with sunglasses, right? Like just be professional and, and just be like them and be trustworthy. And exactly the point you're making, like they have to sell this internally too. And their reputation is on the line. So if you're just like, if you're just being like them, you're, you're, you're have the same proposal they're using as well, right? Like you're just in line with the expectations. Uh, that helps a lot too. Like you don't have to be, I mean, you have to be special in that you're nice and that you're professional sure. and that you have a good plan to get them results. But just like fit in, right? Like fit in with the rest of the companies and and be trustworthy to uh, yeah to get the get the deal off the line. Yeah, for sure. And funny enough, one of the biggest impacts to my closing rate has been a professional proposal. I know it's so silly, but that professional proposal, something that I actually include a video going through it. So the thought process is when you know mid level marketing employee needs a pitch to their box, they don't have to be the salesperson. They can just play the video. Um, if that's something that you haven't tried, like proposals with videos, they are meant to be watched by boss or owner. They help explain your service and a closer just goes right up. I'm, I'm going to steal that for sure. Like we're actually, uh, so we have tried with and without proposals and uh, we're going back to proposals uh, like you like you mentioned. And this video I'm going to add into because we found as well, like internally they can't sell it as well as you can, right? With a nice, uh, the nice deck, the nice case studies, it just doesn't hit the same. So I think that's a good one with the video. I'm definitely, uh, definitely stealing that. Yeah. Nice. nice. Well, cool, man. What, yeah. One question <laughs> I have for you is we're talking about selling to big companies. And at least for me, normally the big companies don't come through personal brand as much as small to mid-size like consulting clients would, for example. So for these larger companies you're working with, are you managing to get them in via LinkedIn and Twitter and YouTube? Or are they mainly going to be people you're doing outbound to? Yeah, go on. Uh, so I would say the majority of the leads we get through inbound from content are not qualified for the agency um, because they're, I mean, it's just like the, the bell curve, right? Like most of the people are just in the middle, like they're good companies, 10 plus employees at least, right? And then bigger, I would say 50 plus, 100 plus. Uh, those are just the minority. So yeah, we do get them sometimes, but it's it's not a lot. Uh, I will say that, uh, and I think actually we discussed this as well when we met in, uh, in Chiang Mai, but I think it's just a trust builder. Like you're putting yourself out there, you're putting yourself out there as an expert. Uh, you're posting the content, talking about the same subject for months. <laughs> like they can scroll and keep scrolling back. They just know you've been doing this thing, and you you are uh, comfortable speaking up online, like saying like, "Hey, I'm the expert here," or at least I have a I have a good opinion, and I'm I'm curious to see what other people think. Um, but yeah, I, th I just think it's a big trust builder. Uh, we do get some uh, inbounds, and we had some really nice ones as well. Um, like. Uh, 200 or 500 plus employees, uh, but it's still, um, it's, it's a bit harder, I would say, sure. to get those consistently because there are just less of them. Um, one thing that did really help for us is that we uh, changed. So it's really easy to talk uh, with your content, talk to the person you were or you, you are. Uh, but if you're selling to bigger companies, like you're talking to the head of sales at a 200 employee company, they have a budget, right? Like you need to be a bit different in your approach on content and not talk about like, hey, if you're just starting an agency, do, do this, right? Because that's 
what you what you've been through already like it's easier to talk about uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind with content uh, to, to attract the right ones yeah i think that's a really good thought because two things on that that stood out to me the first one being just having content is going to help indirectly i mean the indirect roi of being someone that can be googled is is we know this yeah. matters because we have our best clients normally have some of a following even if they're enterprise like a linkedin following and the second thing you mentioned there is building content around who you can sell to. Like for myself, I had to make a very conscious decision that I was going to start a consulting program because I had so many leads that I couldn't sell the agency to. So I had two options. I could either turn my content and exclude most of my audience because I'm selling to mainly companies doing multiple millions a year, or I could make another product that was more of a beginner focus. So for me, I chose to make a beginner focused product, which is why I sell mostly to my social media audience. And then I have a, you know, my... My average client is five or 10 million a year for the agency. Like they normally don't come in off an Instagram video that shows where I'm traveling. They don't, they don't <laughs> no. care. Um, so, you know, I think the intentionality in terms of, you know, who you're going to be selling to your social is uh, quite a big thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a hard one to crack as well. Like you'll uh, like, obviously probably a lot of guys watching right now or girls watching right now. It's uh, they're also going to be, doing lead generation as an agency owner or they're similar to us as opposed to the people you want to sell to. So it's, I think it's a, it's an interesting thing with content. You're going to, you want to attract a certain type of audience, but you're also going to attract a lot of people that rather be like you as opposed to people you want to sell to. So it's an interesting uh, and, and a hard thing to crack. Uh, but if you do, like we do some giveaways on LinkedIn, for example, where we really specifically point out how we uh, got a certain client, uh, a certain call with a big company. And then that really does attract like the right people because that's exactly what they're going for, uh, as opposed to uh, maybe some other content about uh, consistency or how to scrape the lead list sure. or whatever. Um, so uh, yeah. Have you put together any offer for those more beginner people that come to you? Do you have like a consulting offer right now? Uh, yeah, so we're working on that. So one thing we did at the agency uh, pretty early on is is building a uh, consistent uh, pipeline, obviously, but also having uh, having sales reps in there to to take calls, which has been working really well for us. Um, so yeah, that's that's something we found that was super helpful. And I think a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say beginners, but I would say like intermediate level could benefit from as well, getting that consistency in uh, without having to hire an agency, uh, but with hiring uh, some uh, overseas uh, people maybe to uh, do some of the call booking, et cetera, uh, or uh, like the, the closers from Twitter <laughs> to uh, take some of the calls. Um, so yeah, we are uh, we are working on that, but that's still in the beginning stages. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's going to <clears throat> Nice. Well, cool. Well, one question I want to pivot to in terms of actually sending cold email campaigns. I am... Um... I always like to ask this. I'm not looking for anything specific here, but what's something that you do in your campaigns that is just not general best practice? Like general best practice. Like it, people listening, they know they know how to write a subject line. They know how to make the cold email about the prospect, not them. They know the basic deliverability things. What is one thing that you're comfortable sharing? That's something that you do that you don't see many people mention, or it's like a little bit of that secret sauce if you can share. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good question. Uh, I think one thing we do, and uh, so, so I have a co-founder, his name is uh, Yelmer, and uh, he does a lot of the uh, script writing. Uh, one thing we do is actually like complete opposite. We just pitch them in one sentence exactly what we do, but then not the outcome. So it's just like everything you shouldn't be doing. And then in one sentence, we we put it out there. And that has uh, has gotten us a good results if the uh, if the service is unique, uh, unique enough. So that's one thing we do that's... Uh, I mean, that basically doesn't take any of the normal boxes. Uh, another thing um, which we steered away from but I'm, I'm going back into is, is putting links in the in the signature again. So I'm putting my LinkedIn in the signature, for example. Uh, so I'm taking the hits and deliverability, but I, I've seen more interesting responses come through just because of that social proof and, and the personal brand we just mentioned. So that's also some things we're experimenting with. Uh, but apart from that, I'll say most of the things are still just nail the basics and do it consistently yeah. and then uh, you'll get the best results yeah what speaking of links in the email one thing that we found recently that i'm curious to know because you, you might have a similar data we found that the biggest thing affecting deliverability if you're looking like really big picture is do people want the thing you're selling because naturally if you have something people want but they interact with like google's smart google knows what people want and what people don't 
Like, for example, if you're selling Facebook ads to e-commerce fashion brands and you have no case studies, like you can do everything right deliverability and you'll be in spam because yeah. no one wants your crap. But we have some clients who are like, their offer is amazing. It's super unique. Everybody wants to work with them. And we can have like, we have a client right now that's we've had for over a year. They consistently, are, they're our best client in terms of book meeting rate. They get one out of 50 consistently. They are in blacklists. They're sending with Zoho's. Their lead lists have a higher bounce rate than our other lead lists. Like out of all of our clients where you check all the deliverability boxes, they're one of the worst, but they get the best results because it doesn't matter if people want the thing. And it's funny. So I think yeah. that, you know, all the deliverability stuff is important, but it's Google knows when people want the thing you're selling. Like they, they know. Um, I'm curious if you've also found where, you know, it's harder to get deliverability well for a bad offer. Yeah, I think it's like a like a spiral. So, I mean, when I, back in my uh, like B2C generation days, we, we did it with email as well. So we sent tons of like warm emails to, to opt-in uh, opt addresses. And um, I mean, it's the same thing. It's just engagement. So if a lot of people click, the email will get delivered uh, better or if they respond or if they write, it's just a scoring uh, algorithm, obviously. Um, so one thing we actually used to do back then was send small campaigns to the most engaged people. And then they would engage a lot. And then we sent out to the rest of the people later on in the day. So it was already like pre-warming the smart, um, pre-warming the yeah the the, the spam filters. Uh, what it's called email, I mean, obviously it's a bit, a bit different, right? You're not 100 percent sure who's going to respond the most, so it's it's, it's harder to do. Uh, but I think the same still applies. We have a good campaign, a lot of people respond, a lot of positive uh, signals, and the campaign will just spiral up. Whereas you're sending something, it's just not hitting, no responses, a point eight percent response rate, right? Like it's just going downhill so definitely uh definitely something we notice as well um but uh, yeah it's uh yeah just have to get the right the right campaign in place yeah. nice and uh, uh a bit of humor here like i made fun of like facebook ads for e-commerce fashion brands with a one page flick funnels vsl website like what what is um historically what do you think is the most competitive or just worst offer you've seen perform like like for me i said the fast facebook ads fashion is one of them if you, another one for me is like the erc credits like i'm curious have you ever seen like there's this like one campaign type you just won't get it into yeah erc type uh, we're not doing anymore either we have clients and uh yeah it's, it just isn't hitting any anymore at least now so uh that's definitely one i agree with um i mean just email marketing for for eagle i think it's just so hard i mean it's such a i would call it a meme niche right like a lot of people just starting out not a lot of like differentiating factors and for the for the prospects you just seem the same even if you have really good case uh, case studies because i mean obviously it's, it's a valid business model and i mean those guys do great things for those brands but they just don't know from the email they just don't see it because it's like the sure. same thing over and over again but I've seen some people call it retention systems now which might work i haven't tested it myself it, it doesn't uh, but i think that that's much. an interesting one no. <laughs> okay. Um, can I think of anything else? I mean, I would say uh, web design is, is is a hard one to correct too. If you can't uh, tie it in with with some ROI based uh, based things, just it's just such a. I mean, actually, we're going through the process of a of a new website right now. Uh, but it's just if you just get it from a referral or you just see a nice website. I mean, that's sure. more of the natural buying buying the is hard. Um, yeah, the timing, right? It's a big thing. So you can do like super large scale outreach, but then, I mean, yeah, it's uh, not always ideal. So I think those uh, like in general, like the ROI or just things that have been like memes online, I think I would uh, I would steer away from. Uh, so yeah. <clears throat> well, good good answer to that. I, um, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Well, nice. Um, To go ahead and, and get cords wrapping this up, the last question I want to ask you is what is the goal for you in terms like, if you did B2B, B2C lead generation, you're growing a cold email agency. You mentioned you're doing a bit of consulting now. Is the goal to build a business you sell? Do you just want to build a cash flow business? Do you want to take this profit, put it into real estate, into a software company? Like, what do the next three to five years look like for you? Yeah, good question. Um, so I would say what we want to do with the agency is um, actually get, uh, get, get some real offices and boots on the ground on the regions we're most active in. Um, so obviously, right, like I met with you in uh, in Thailand, uh, you're you're traveling yourself. Uh, but what I found is I'm, I'm looking to uh, to get uh, get an office uh, office again. I had an office with my previous company, so that's uh, definitely something I'm looking uh, uh, looking forward to to getting an office in the Netherlands again in Amsterdam, uh, as well as potentially something like London or or Dubai. Uh, so that's one thing I'm building towards because I just feel like it uh, creates that. Uh, 
I mean, be like them, right? To sell to sell to them, like we just discussed. I think it will help uh, a lot. Um, so that's one thing. And I just want to grow it uh, really, uh, really big. So there's no like cap, no 20 clients at a month. I just want to do it big. And then eventually I want to get uh, into software. So I, I sold the first line AI tool actually, um, uh, like, like a year ago or uh, last August. And I just enjoyed the process so much, like the technical things, like I'm a bit technical, a bit uh, commercial. So I think it's a good match. Uh, but just haven't found the right uh, right timing yet. And I, I want to accumulate some capital to dump into that and uh, see where it can go. So those two things, grow the agency big and then get into software with uh, with those profits. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that sounds good. Well, thank you for coming on. And as a final sign off, where can people go if they want to connect with you? Yeah, they can go on uh, on YouTube on, or Twitter, uh, Jan van Muscher, if you can spell it out. I think it will be good to put, uh, put a link in the <laughs> yeah, link. It. Uh, Dutch name. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm starting out on YouTube. Uh, so uh, I would appreciate a, a subscribe there. And then on Twitter, obviously, I'm, uh, I'm active. Awesome. Thanks again. It's been great. I'll get this posted and uh, people can go check you out on Twitter and YouTube. Yeah. Likewise. Uh, nice. Uh, nice catching up. <laughs>